Hi, I'm Yuji Haraguchi. Today I'm going to butcher whole kampachi and use the pieces to make six unique dishes. Today I'm making six different dishes with this whole kampachi. It's based on my business philosophy called Mottainai, no waste in Japanese. The first step is to remove all the fins for safety. Sometimes the fins are really sharp and it can have some germs and also some poisons too. Fortunately, that's not the case of this kampachi, so I'm safe. I'm going to start taking off the scale. I'm using yanagi knife, which is usually used for slicing sashimi and sushi. I'm starting from the tail to the front because that's the opposite direction of how scale runs. This technique is called skibiki. This is the best way to remove the scale completely. In this way, scales are all attached like uh, strings and then you can discard it very easily. What you see is actually the skin right underneath the scale. So I was putting a knife right between scale and skin. If fish is fresh, the scales are strongly attached to each other. If the fish is not fresh, I'm not able to do this uh, technique. And also if you like to deep fry, it creates a really nice, almost like uh, chips. Kampachi scales are completely removed. Now I'm going to clean the kampachi. Cleaning means removing the gill and the guts and blood. For this process, I'm using deva. Deva is a single edge blade, really sharp, and also makes it easier to flay the fish. So I'm putting the bone right next to where the color bones are, separating the color from the rest of the body. I'm trying to be very careful not to damage or separate the organs. You don't want any blood to penetrate into the rest of the body. So I want to remove as one single piece and then uh, the removal will be much, much cleaner. I'm using just a kitchen brush to scrub the bloodline, the vein that runs underneath of the spine. It is important to get the blood out of the fish because blood is where it deteriorates first and then the germ grow much quicker if there's the blood left. Now kampachi is completely cleaned. I can break it down to individual pieces. The first step is to remove the head and collar as a one piece from the rest of the body. I'm just using scissors cutting two colors from the head. To flay the fish, open up the skin. Then cut around the spine so that I won't leave any meat right next to the spine. Same thing right here, opening up the fillet by cutting the skin first. This is what you want to see, meats are all separated, but the fillet is kept just by the tail and then the ribs. I'm taking the tail part off first, then I'm going to switch it to scissors again, separating the ribs. Same thing here, opening the skin for the belly side and top loin side first, flip it so that the meat is on the bottom side. In this way, I can actually see where the knife is. Cutting the first fillet is a little bit easier. The other side is a little bit more difficult to see what you're cutting. It requires some uh, practice. Now the second fillet is removed. I'm gonna put the bone aside with the head. Each fillet will be broken down into three parts, the top loin, the belly, and the tail. When you're working with fillet, it is important to notice how pink or red the fillet itself is. If you don't see these nice pink colors all around, that means the fish is a little bit old. When you poke it, the meat should also bounce back to you. 
What I'm doing right now is separating the ribs from the fillet. For this, I'm using my slicer. It's a long skinny knife that is a little bit more flexible. Uh, it is important to know the rib it actually ends in the middle of the belly. Removing the pin bones from the ribs, they're actually attached to each other like a triangle. So by separating those, I can put my knife much, much easier. I'm removing the very end of the fillet. It just has a little bit of bone and not so much meat. I'm going to separate the tail. For this process, I'm using deba. Deba is a lot sharper and it has more weight. It makes it a little bit easier to portion. So I'm going to separate the fillet into the top loin and the belly by removing the pin bones. Pin bones run from the head to the middle of the fillet between the top loin and the belly. It is very difficult to remove unless you trim it. The, my favorite part of the kampachi is the belly part. It is very crunchy and also fatty and uh, very pretty when I take off the skin. So that's the part that I would save it for myself. In general, the pin bones parts are removed and discarded, but I'm going to combine these parts together with the head and the bone to make the ramen broth. This kampachi is entirely broken down. I can say that I did a good job here because I can see each individual line of the bone. Now I'm going to use all different parts of kampachi to make six unique dishes. Let's cook. First, I'm going to use kampachi head and bones to make ramen. The broth is going to be made with water and a kombu seaweed. What's unique about this ramen is the broth is entirely made with roasted kampachi bones and head. I'm pressing the head down so that the entire head can be roasted evenly along with the bone. Pork and chickens are used for ramen because of its high collagen. This kampachi has a great collagen that can turn into delicious ramen. You don't want to over roast the bones because you actually lose the collagen if you roast them too much. I'm removing kombu out of the water and then adding the pin bones, head, and the bone. You can kind of see collagen right in the spine. It's kind of like a jello that will become really good part of the broth. And then I'm adding some aromatic uh, vegetable, leek and ginger. This will kind of balance the aroma and uh, the broth won't be as fishy. While ramen broth is boiling, I'm going to use a part of the kampachi loin to make chashu. Chashu is usually braised pork sliced thin, but today I'm going to do my original twist with the kampachi. So I'm going to just let this top loin block marinate in original sweet soy sauce. Chashu is marinated for about a half hour and I'm gonna just torch all around it, what's also known as tataki style. This is kind of my own ideas of creating similar visual look as a chashu. The inside is completely rare. The chashu will be slowly cooked with the heat from the broth as well. After a few hours, the broth is very nice and creamy. That's the kind of color that you also see from a tonkotsu ramen or a regular ramen. This is a sake kasu, it's a byproduct from a sake fermentation process. A flavor unique to sake kasu. Since it has some rice, 
the broth itself becomes a little bit thicker without diluting the flavor. It kind of balances all the flavors, especially with the fish broth. Chashu is usually sliced thin on top of ramen. I can cut it straight down and then becomes almost like the same shape as the chashu. This particular type of ramen noodle, it's not as chewy. The noodle will soak up the broth much better than the chewy noodle so that you will taste the broth really well in the noodle. I'm lifting the noodle so that the noodle will all separate. The noodle will soak up the broth as even as possible. This is scallions, chashu, kampachi, adding a jerzo of chiyu, which is a chicken fat, black pepper for spice and heat. This is our first dish kampachi ramen with kampachi chashu. Next, I'll be using kampachi cutters to make himono. Himono is a traditional fish preservation method, curing with a salt and dry aging. This is such a simple dish, it just takes time. Kampachi cutters are very tasty because it's fatty. You can get multiple flavors from a single piece of color. Put it in the fridge and don't cover it. You wanna just let it dry out. After a week or so, this is what it looks like. The surface is super dry and it becomes kind of glossy. It's almost like leather. So I'm using the skewers and then using this pan to make the colors kind of float in the air so that the fish will be cooked evenly and then entire color will have a nice crispy finish. The temperature is about 450. I'm going to cook for about seven minutes. While my colors are roasting, I'm going to prepare some garnish. Grated daikon radish adds a really nice bitter flavor to it and it also cleans the palate. You can kind of see the fat sizzling right underneath the skin. The entire color it has the same surface texture because of the way it was cooked floating with the skewers. Plate it nice and simple with the daikon radish and a little bit of soy sauce. This is the finished kampachi himono with the kampachi colors. Next, I'm going to make kampachi kasuzuke with the kampachi tail. Kasuzuke is marinating anything with sake kasu. The first step is to salt the fish. What's special about the tail is it has a strong muscle and it has more flavor compared to the rest of the body. I'm mixing sake kasu with mirin and then making it a really thick paste. Kampachi tail has been marinated half hour. Take out just a little bit of excess sake kasu off the meat. Use a skewer again to roast it. Otherwise, the bottom part will be steamed. I usually cook at a little bit lower temperature, 350 or 400, and you're gonna cook it a little bit longer. Not to burn a kasu. The process itself is very similar as a himono, but the flavor and the results are completely different. That's why I like to work with those two different methods. That's our third dish, kampachi kasuzuke with kampachi tail. For my next dish, I'm making kampachi maki roll with kampachi belly. I'm seasoning the rice with sushi vinegar.
you want to make sushi rice ahead of time so that uh, there is time for the rice to rest. While rice is resting, I'm preparing the ingredients. Cucumber, Now I'm preparing belly for maki roll. First I'm removing the skin. I'm using the knife slicer so that uh, removing the skin is a little bit easier since it's a narrower and also it's more flexible and bendy. So I'm making the strip based on the size of the seaweed. Because of the thickness, you can just simply cut that into strips without any trimming or anything. I put the nori seaweed half cut onto bamboo roll. It is important to season rice well so that I can spread rice evenly. And then uh, make sure that the rice meets with the rice the other side and then press it lightly and then make sure there is a little hanging from the seaweed. You're gonna cut it with one stroke as much as possible. It's helpful to have a little bit wet knife so that the rice won't stick to the knife as much and it makes the cut a little bit more sharp. Finishing with toasted sesame seed. This is my kanpachi maki roll made with kanpachi belly. Traditional roll hoso maki is very simple and then people actually eat it as a snack. So that's my perfect snack. Next, I'm making nigiri with a kanpachi loin. Nigiri is a term that two are put together, neta and shari. Neta is a term for slice of fish. Shari is basically sushi rice. I'm using my yanagi knife to cut netta. I'm scoring each netta so that the netta will bend over shari much nicer. Making nigiri itself is not difficult to do, but difficult part is how to cut netta. I'm forming shari. You want to make nigiri in a way so that the netta will cover the rice completely. So it's almost like an umbrella. Shaping the rice, making an air pocket so that it'll be nice mouth feeling when you eat nigiri. It's very important to have perfect balance of netta and shari. For toppings, I have two ingredients. Umeboshi is salt fermented plum. We add a really unique salty flavor from the plum. And kinome will add really refreshing, almost like a minty flavor. I love these colors and also the flavor combinations. This is my kampachi nigiri. It is simple. But simple doesn't mean easy. That's why you often see this type of sushi only at a sushi restaurant. Finally, I'm making shabu shabu salad. Shabu shabu is a method of cooking thin sliced meat in a hot water. So I have these kampachi slices from before. I'm taking some of these slices to cure with kombu. Kombu is a dry kelp. The natural salt from the kelp will cure kampachi, taking the water out from the fish, but at the same time, adding uh, extra umami, which is the glutamic acid into the fish. I like to cure for at least half hour. Now curing is finished, and then I have hot water waiting for shabu shabu. You can kind of see that the kombu is flexible. It's not like a dry piece of paper. Shabu shabu is such an easy method. You just have a hot water, dip it with the chopsticks, and then make sure the outside is completely cooked, and then quickly chill it in ice water. Shabu shabu is a really quick process. Do these shabu shabu motions for two or three seconds.
Now I'm just gonna assemble my Shabu Shabu salad and the bottom scallion and a micro green and some nice colorful tomatoes. Bring back the Shabu Shabu. I roll them up a little bit so that it looks nice. <laughs> And then drizzle the salad dressing over everything. Just finishing with toasted sesame seed. This is my shabu shabu salad with kampachi loin. I hope you enjoy watching me break down whole fish and then make these six different dishes. Kampachi is one of my very favorite fish in America. With just the thought, you can make one whole fish into so many different amazing meals. Motainai is just more of a way of thinking and this thought can be applied for any aspect of your life.